Hello everyone, this is Paul the Okanite coming back to you with part three of Worthington Publishing's Shiloh, where we are doing the first day of the battle, and we are now at two in the afternoon, the 1400 hour turn. The current situation is the Union has stabilized their line pretty much where they need to, which is the part that's closest to Pittsburgh Landing, which uh, would be the end of the game for them if they lose that. They are going to have a whole bunch of reinforcements coming in on turn 14 and turn 15. And to get them, they need Pittsburgh Landing in their possession. Now, as we go down the line, we see again, it's solid pretty much all around. Until we get to the right flank, which is considerably squishier, we have a couple beat up cavalry units. That's uh, a decent sized brigade, but it is also green. So we've tried to compensate by putting the leader there to go ahead and, and make them more likely to stand, but they could very well go, in which case there's not much over here. Here's another brigade of the same division, and the final brigade of that division is way over here. For three hours now, Ulysses Grant has been trying to rally these green troops without any success, and they're desperately needed over on the right flank. We have to see what Grant can do to get these guys motivated to rejoin the fight. But right now, we're at the Confederate player turn, and there are no uh, command radius problems, and there are no offensive artillery fires. There's Offensive artillery fire is fairly rare in this game, and that's exactly what we're seeing. And so it is now time for the Southerners to execute their move. So here we go. So the Southerners have bucked up against their Union opponents once again, and pretty much up and down the line, although we are starting to see a couple hexes that do not have any Southerners doing the attack. And that's for a couple reasons. One is that they did have some routes, so the routers are catching up. But the other reason is that they're starting to have combat ineffective or shattered brigades. They have two infantry brigades plus one cavalry regiment. So these guys who are flipped over showing us their green size. They cannot enter an enemy zone of control, so they are basically done for being on the assault. They may get a small amount of strength back during the night turn, but barring that, they're basically done. And even if they do, it'll be like a one or two point bump, and they're not going to be big attacking units anymore. All right, so everybody's in line. Well, let's go ahead and have the Union do their defensive fire and see what kind of damage is done. And we can see the result of the fire. There were pretty heavy casualties on the Union left side of the line. And as we got over to the weaker part of the Union line, the casualties did slack off. Altogether, we have 12 casualties. So 1,200 new casualties to add to the existing 6,900 casualties the Confederates have already incurred. The Union is sitting at 7,600 casualties. So unless the Confederates roll well, there may actually be more Confederate casualties than Union casualties at this point. We may have reached the crossover point on that. Uh, we did have two units withdraw. They both took three hits each on the left side and withdrew two hexes based on the uh, combat result. And we had one router over here that decided to be someplace else. I will go ahead and apply the hits and now we will do the Southern offensive fire. So the Confederates delivered seven hits in total across the Union line, and except for the right flank of the Union line, they held their ground. Unfortunately, the guys on the right decided to route out of there and leave with uh, minor hits. So the situation on the right, if it was perilous before, it is getting to a critical stage at this point. The Union is absolutely going to have to redeploy some strength to the right part of the line and possibly weaken up the center some. It's just the way it is. Okay, so the Confederates have done their moves, they've done their shots, they simply have to do their rallies, and we're on to the Union player turn. So all the Confederates rallied, and now we are up to the Union player turn. There is no offensive artillery fire, there is no uh, command control issues. So let us go ahead and figure out what we're going to do for a Union move. Since the left held, I may just stay put. That will help really seal the deal as far as keeping the Confederates out of Pittsburgh Landing. However, I think we're going to have to start pulling back in the center, straightening the line, shifting, shifting strength to the right, because 
What's going on over here is very bad. These two units together, I think, have three strength points. So that's not going to stop all this Confederate cavalry. we got to get more stuff over there, and we got to get it over there quickly. So let us see what the Yankees can pull off this time. So at this point, the Union has decided to stand tall on their left. They pull back a little bit here to try to shift strength to the right. That's going to be a theme, I think, going forward. I don't think they're afraid to exchange fire at this point. In uh, shifting right, we make contact with Claiborne over here, so we're going to have a little fight with him. And then this cavalry is just going to do the best it can to keep Forrest and his buddies back for another turn or two until the rest of the guys can get a chance to show up. All right, let's see. We have done the movement. Oh, the one thing I forgot was the, the two shots from the gunboats. I'll go ahead and take them on Statham. Same guy they've been shooting at this whole time. That is over here. Two shots at the at Statham. We got, that's an effective shot, but he holds morale. And that's a miss. Those gunboats still haven't done anything. We are up to Confederate defensive fire. And what we see happen is on the Union left, the Confederates did a good job. Only one casualty, but they opened up a breach in the line of two consecutive hexes. Something we haven't seen before, I don't think. And on the right, Union cavalry stood, so they managed to survive a shot from Forrest. And likewise, the Sherman unit took two hits, but even though it's green, it did not run. So the right-hand side held together pretty well. The left-hand side has a little bit of a problem. However, even if the Confederates go forward, they're going to just run into this artillery. And in fact, if they go to here, to the to these woods hexes, it's actually clear over here. The artillery will actually be able to do something really unusual in this game. It would be able to do a ranged shot. How about that? All right, the Confederate fire is done. We're up to the Union offensive fire. And the Union fire amounts to almost nothing. The only hit was on Statham, the guy that's been on the Confederate right flank. The rest of them was all morale checks that passed, so not much to report. All right, I've got to do a, a bunch of rallies for the Union. They do matter. Then we'll be set up for the next turn. So the Union had a pretty good rally turn. Grant finally rallied his man, which is Wraith, from McClernand's division. However, one of the other brigades from uh, McClernand did not rally, and one of the only few guys that didn't rally. The uh, Union has some strength to be able to maneuver in their next player turn, so hope springs eternal. There's no command control problems for the Confederates. They have no offensive artillery. Casualties stand at 8,800 Union casualties and 8,400 Confederate casualties. It's almost dead even at this point. We're up to the Confederate States movement. So the Confederates have moved. We can see that they have tried to take advantage of this breach in the line. Prentice is in trouble all over again. I guess he's getting used to that by now. And the Union line is effectively split. Now, what Lama is going to have to do is that you cannot re-enter a zone of control of a unit whose zone of control you left in the same move. It costs you one extra to leave, so with his six movement, what he cannot do is go three, five, and end up back in the same, into uh, Cheatham's zone of control here. What he'll have to do is just go back two hexes or go back one hex. In this situation, I think he may be going back two hexes. And let's see, they've just bucked up over here. There's actually a possibility of some Confederate artillery fire over here across this open field. Well, maybe not. No, these guys are down. Uh, let's see, and we bucked up over here, and this one lowly strength point of cavalry has got uh, two regiments of uh, this independent cavalry that is out here under Johnston's direct control. So, yeah, they, they think they'll probably take that hex. They'll probably eliminate this guy and take that hex, but there are guys coming. All this is on the way. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so the Confederates have all done their movements. We're up to Union defensive fire. And the Union banged away at the Confederates doing some mostly minor hits. They did seven hits in total, 700 guys, most of which was this uh, cavalry unit, which has now gone shattered. It's now been shattered and is therefore combat ineffective, cannot enter zones of control. Okay, nothing else is all that noteworthy. Oh, except for this one-point cavalry union, this union cavalry unit. He rolled a 10, 
and managed to deliver one hit on Bedford Forest. That's, that is the only thing that he could roll to deliver a hit in those woods, and he did it. Okay, I'm going to do the tally, and the next thing is the Confederate offensive fire. And the Southerners did rather well. They got 1,100 more Union casualties based on having four really massive shots. All four of them had three Confederate units adjacent, which qualified for the plus one bonus, one of which was in the clear, so it really was a plus one bonus, all of them on the maximum table. The Union was set up to take some hits, and they did. You see that we got three hits and one with a two. So nine, 11 hits. Uh, most of the guys held except for the obligatory retreat, the two-hex retreat, but they did not rout. And Forrest did nothing. That 100 guys are still standing in front of him, daring him to do something, which he didn't do this turn. All right, that is the Confederate turn, except for, I see, one, two rally attempts. I'll take care of that. We're going to pick up with the Union movement. Oh, excuse me, we're going to pick up with the Union artillery fire. There will be offensive artillery fire because we have the two gunboats. All right, let me uh, tally and do the rallies. And uh, the Confederates had one of their two routers recover. So one guy's still running. The other guy, who doesn't matter because he's like got two points left and he's, uh, he is shattered. So we are now done with the Confederate player turn of turn 11, which is 1,500 hours. So that's going to be three in the afternoon. Casualties are actually... Uh, Let's see, I see 99 Union losses and 91 Confederate losses at this point. So it's still pretty darn close as far as losses. And we're up to the uh, Union offensive artillery. So uh, we got the Lexington and Tyler going to shoot, as well as we have some uh, pot shots across the field. Now, artillery is halved at infantry outside of range one and doubled at range one so it's either bad or really good so these are truly pot shots all right i'm going to do the offensive artillery none of the shots against the confederate units were effective i combined the two uh, land-based artillery here on one guy and uh, did not get anything now what you do when you fire the offensive fire with land artillery is that you have to put a fire marker on there to remind yourself that you cannot move them. All right, so now we are up to the Union move. All right, the Union has had their move. I've elected to stay bucked up over here. I don't really want to fall back just yet. The Confederates have three more moves before the Union reinforcements come on, and we're one, two, three, four, five hexes away. So I want to keep them back just a little bit this turn just so that we're sure that we don't have something bad happen. Over here, we're actually going to have counter battery fire. We got guns that see each other over the open fields. How about that? And let's see, we stayed in contact with this one lonely guy who's with Bragg. Hey, maybe the Confederates will be lucky and we'll shoot Bragg and put them out of their misery. And a broke contact here. We have gotten enough stuff. We got two brigades over here now. Two infantry brigades ought to be able to hold off these Confederate cavalry regiments. They'll give it a try, but most likely the cavalry will run out of gas when they come up against that infantry. So, we're up to the Confederate defensive fire. And in this, the Union takes four hits, most of which was from a timely uh, 10 roll on uh, this guy who had a maximum shot directed at him. So he took three hits and he had a retreat. He did not rout. This guy took one, that's the four hits. Everybody else, uh, let's see, we had one guy, one guy route from the line here, Apprentice decided to leave, that's not a big deal. And the Union set back over here, so there was no shooting. Uh, so it'll wait till the Confederate move. All right, that's the Confederate shots. I'm gonna go ahead and tally, and then we will have the Union let loose with their offensive fire. And Union offensive fire was pretty uneventful. Three hits in total, nobody ran. That's about it. The casualty count now stands at 10,300 Union casualties and 9,400 Confederate casualties. All right, I'm going to tally the casualties, and we will be on to turn 12, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We're starting to hear the footsteps of the Union troops coming. They come on turn 14. And turn begins with... Two Confederate offensive artillery fire shots, counter battery fire, 
one of which didn't do anything. The other one actually delivered a hit. How about that? There's something new. All right, that's it for the offensive artillery. We're on to Confederate movement. All right, the Confederates have moved up and is usually bucked up pretty much up and down the line. The Confederates have come up adjacent to this line of artillery that was set up, so they're going to be receiving double shots coming back while they stand there in the clear on the encampment, so they're going to have some more encampment problems coming up. So, all right, I'm going to shoot the Yankees, and let's see how this goes. Defensive fire. Well, it was a good day to be in the Union Army. They did 14 hits. 14 hits! Among them was the blast from the artillery on Trebru that did four hits because they were standing out in the open. They rolled a 10, and guess what? Trebru, the best infantry brigade the Confederates have, is now shattered and combat ineffective. It will be not advancing on any more Union units unless they get some stragglers back at night. Further damage up and down the field. We did have a rout. More forced retreats. They did not rout, but they took this guy took three hits. This guy took oh, Forrest, bed for Forrest. He's shattered also. He took three hits. He's only got two strength points left. So Bedford Forrest is now uh, kind of brain dead for the rest of the battle. Good job, Yankees. Let me tell you the hits, and then we're on to the Union half of turn 12. The Confederates rallied two of their three routed units, and I went ahead and did the Union offensive fire in their half of turn 12. Uh, the gunboats did nothing, but the artillery did a, a massive hit on Breckenridge, who was standing out in the open field. This is why that artillery was set up there, and they did four more hits, and Breckenridge is now shattered and combat ineffective. So the Confederate attack on their right, the Union left, is starting to fall apart. They're going to have to try to shift some more units over here if this is going to continue, uh, which means they're going to be attacking less someplace else. So uh, in their move, that's the problem they're going to have to deal with, but for right now, right now it is the Union move, so that's what we're going to do. So, the Union have done their moves, and as we can see, they pretty much have a solid line now all the way up and down, and they've stopped falling back. They're going ahead and maintain contact. We're going to go ahead and blast it out if these Confederates want to do that. Welcome back into the open field, should you guys choose to do so. And uh, Hurlbut's division is there. Holding the line at the far left, doing a good job. A little bit battle-worn, yes, but he's hanging in there. I think the Confederates are showing more signs of being battle-worn at this point. All right, we're up to the Confederate defensive fire. I'm going to do that, and we'll see what we got. And with the exception of a very nice blast on this artillery unit that was on the end of the line, which took four hits, so it's kind of done. The infantry pretty much cleaned up on it. But... Hey, we have a lot of Yankees over here now. In fact, we even have some reserve units, so it's okay. It's okay that he got blasted. So that's about it. Uh, guys took hits. They didn't run. They didn't, they didn't retreat. They just stood there in line and took their hit and said, Hey, th thank you, sir. May I have another? All right, I'll tally, and then we're going to return fire. And the Union shots produced five hits, including one route back over here. And... Not much else, just uh, just some casualties that are going to be uh, tallied and absorbed. All right, we're done. Uh, there's only one Union unit to rally. I'll do that. We'll be into the Confederate turn, and they got to figure out what they're going to do with this left. I, my, by my count, there's only three combat effective brigades over here, so uh, they're going to have to do something if this assault is going to continue on this end of the line. All right, we're at the start of turn 13. One more turn before Union reinforcements start coming in, and we start to get into the night. We had counter-battery in the offensive artillery phase that actually was effective. Shushed away the Union battery, did not do damage, but it routed it. All right, so we are up to Confederate movement. And the Confederates went ahead and bucked up as best they could. Everything that's effective in the uh, First Corps and the Reserve Corps is now... Continuing the attack over here. We have four units that can do that. So that's what's going on The artillery is going to control the open field We have no infantry to push through there the 
Union artillery, though, has been pretty much neutralized, but there's really nothing there to take advantage of it. And besides, there are reserve units over here. The, the Union has reserve infantry to take care of any issues that pop up. Over here, this is the strength of the Confederate Army right now. Most of them are in decent shape, not perfect shape, but decent. But there are one or two that are, that are kind of getting into the danger zone. And the Confederate cavalry has called off this attack. They're outnumbered over two to one. I don't see much reason to go ahead and get those guys all smashed up for something that just isn't going to work. All right, we have the Union defensive fire. And the Union did nine hits to the Confederates. Uh, they went ahead and pushed this guy back, so he's no longer a threat. And kind of up and down the line, one guy routed, one guy retreated, and the rest just took their hits and stood there. And again, we're kind of, the cavalry's kind of pulled back. There's going to be nothing else going on over here. All right, that's the Union defensive fire. I will go ahead and mark it, and we'll do the Confederate offensive fire. And the Confederates delivered eight hits to the Yankees, most of which was simply absorbed and nothing happened. We did have one of McClernand's brigades, Wraith, blow up. He took three hits, retreated two, and routed on top of it. But aside from that, uh, I think we're in good shape for the Union. And I don't think the Confederates who were over here, I don't think they would even want to advance. Uh, we got four decent units left over there and uh, maybe a couple at the other end. It's, I think that, uh, I think we're getting pretty close to being it. It's one more day turn left and, uh, and we're gonna, and we're gonna actually have start having uh, more Yankees show up. Oh joy. Uh, all right, let me mark the hits and the union gets to do offensive artillery fire. I do see at least one, so we'll take care of that too. And the Union offensive artillery fire was ineffective, so that we, uh, we will be moving on to their move. And the Union has done their move. They have actually uh, done some advancing to go ahead and close up with these Rebs, start putting some uh, pressure back on them for a change. And mainly it's over here by uh, Pittsburgh Landing. So I think the Confederates have pretty much been stopped, although they do have a couple units here that are still over 20 points each. So these two are very healthy units. This guy is not. Uh, so I think their problem is that they don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> so I don't know what two units are gonna do against all this, but here it is. All right, we are up to Confederate defensive fire. And the Confederates delivered eight hits, actually all in pretty good roles, they all had uh, a lot of power. Uh, here there were three guys shooting at one at max table, so it was only a minus one on the roll. And uh, I think he rolled a nine, something like that. Got delivered three hits, delivered three hits. But they didn't rot, they just retreated. And this guy took two hits and, uh, and held. All right, that would be Confederate defensive fire. It is now Union offensive fire. So the Yankees deliver eight hits with their shots. Uh, the Confederates stand tall over here, although, no, he's not quite uh, ineffective. He's got one more hit after this, so very close to ineffective, but not quite. Of the units that were attacking on the Union right, the two rightmost ones uh, gave up the ghost. They both went ahead and route. Uh, we did have Lamingo combat ineffective, shattered in the Confederate half of the turn. And I think somewhere out here, there's another, there's a Confederate that did the same. So it's, it's really winding down at this point. Uh, the Union has the reinforcements come in on their player turn. You're gonna have uh, one, one division from the Army of the Ohio coming in at Pittsburgh Landing, and the last division from Army of Tennessee, that would be Lou Wallace coming in uh, from Crump's Landing. And at this point, I think we're kind of done. I'll go ahead and do the final tallies and we can discuss kind of what, what happened here. So here we are at the last daylight turn. At this point, I think the Confederates have no choice but to disengage and try to get organized for the uh, fight on the second day. The Union uh, line is solid, although there are parts that are squishier than others, but it is a solid line. Of the brigades that were active on the first day, I would say the Union have at least 10 
that are fully fit for being offensive on day two. They have one division of the Army of the Ohio, the first one, coming in at Pittsburgh Landing. Each of these divisions has three infantry brigades plus cavalry and artillery generally. And we have Lew Wallace coming in with another three infantry brigades. And then on the uh, next turn, there's going to be three more divisions from the Army of the Ohio coming in. So that's five fresh divisions, 15 fresh brigades that the Union is going to bring to bear on day two. Add to that the 10 that are still, that still have fight left in them from the original set of brigades from Grant's Army. And you got like 25 brigades that are ready to go on day two. The Confederates, on the other hand, are in nowhere near that good a shape. They have many brigades that look like these guys. They've lost at least half their strength. They are shattered. They can recover one or two points at night. They might recover slightly at night, but it's not going to help them that much because the first contact is going to bring them down to being shattered again, most likely. They're not fit for offensive operations. The Confederate artillery will finally come into play for real because they will be defensive and the Union will be, will be advancing to attack them. This cloud field was a real killing ground. It was wide open space. It's the, one of the first places that artillery actually did something in this game. Normally you can have some activity, and I think we did in the Peach Orchard area, but in this particular game, it really was this cloud field where everything just kind of, everything got pretty nasty. And it's also where the Union decided to start to hold. And once they decide to hold, the casualties mount quickly because now you've got two player turns that are causing hits, not just one. Uh, the Confederates, we have routed units, but fine, they'll rally. But they have their challenges. Now, in reality, the Confederates thought that they were still on the offensive for day two. They thought that they had crushed the Union. They were planning on attacking on the second day. And in fact, I believe they did so for a while until they figured out what they were up against. And then they just had to go on the defensive. And they were pushed back just like the Union was on the first day and eventually just disengaged and left. So in terms of casualties, we've got... Oh, let's see. We've got, for the Confederates, we got 13,400. For the Union, we have 12,700. So we have almost an identical number of casualties. Those camps really helped out the Union. I'm sure the Confederate had at least a dozen hits come from that alone. But the game was by no means certain that the Confederates would run out of gas. For a while there, it looked like the Union was pretty much on the ropes. But they managed to pull it together. They got just enough guys in the right places. They were able to shift guys where they needed to shift them and just slow the Confederates down, eat up time, cause hits here and there until you finally start getting shattered brigades. And eventually the Confederates do run out of gas, which is exactly what happened here. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed yet and watched three full episodes of this, my gosh, why don't you subscribe if you like it that much? Give me your comments, click the button so that you get notified when I put new stuff out there, and let's go ahead and, and have some fun together. But for now, I think that's it for Shiloh from Worthington Publishing. This is Paul, the Oaken Knight, wishing you all a pleasant evening. <laughs>